Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar about using Cambridge English Cahoots in online teaching and learning. My name is Rosalia Valero, and I work in the Cambridge English office based in Mexico. With me today is Helen Allen. Hi there, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Helen Allen, and I work on digital language teaching, learning, and training at Cambridge Assessment English. And if we look at the poll, we can see 40% uh, of you are joining us from Asia, 19% um, from South, South America, 18% from Europe, 16 from North America, and we've also got people, 5% of us are joining from Africa and a few from Australia too. So that's absolutely fantastic. And welcome everybody um, to today's session. So let's have a look. We're going to um, look at how you can make the most of cahoots in your online English lessons. Although the information that I'm going to be giving you is also relevant for face to face teaching, but we'll be focusing predominantly on online teaching today. We're going to look at also how you can set cahoots for independent learning and how to provide the right levels of challenge and support for your learners. We'll also be discussing key issues in choosing or creating cahoots to support language learning objectives. We'll be showing you some Cambridge English cahoots for young learners today. But whatever age or whatever level of learners you teach, you'll find plenty of practical tips for choosing, creating and using cahoots for English teaching and learning in this session. So I'm going to ask you to uh, take part in another poll uh, just now. OK, so do you use cahoots for English teaching and learning? Tell us about your experience so far. Do you use them all the time, frequently, just occasionally? Have you tried cahoots but never used them in your English classes? Or have you never used cahoots before today? Do you use cahoots for English teaching and learning? Tell us in the poll there. Oh, this is really interesting. So some of you, quite a large percentage of you actually haven't used a Kahoot before. And some of you occasionally or frequently use Kahoots. About 28% of you occasionally use them, maybe 13, 14% frequently. And some of you just don't use Kahoots. So whatever your level of experience or confidence with Kahoots, this session will give you lots of tips and help you build your confidence to use them well for English teaching and learning. So Cahoots are interactive online games and many teachers use Kahoot because it helps them to motivate and to engage their learners. You can search for Cahoots on the website that have been created by other teachers or organisations and it's really easy to create your own games on the Kahoot platform too. You can use Cahoots on a whole variety of devices, your computer, a tablet, a smartphone, and you can use them in a variety of settings, for example, in online lessons or face-to-face -face classrooms. And learners can also play them at home in self-study mode, or you can set a Kahoot as a challenge too. And when you play a Kahoot in an online or face-to-face -face class, you can choose whether learners play against each other as individuals, so it's one-on-one, -on -one or whether they play against teams. So you might have teams playing against each other. And we'll come back to this later on. It's really important to ensure that you choose a way of playing that's going to provide your learners with the right level of challenge to ensure they feel comfortable and able to a wider range of question types or to access additional features as well. Okay, so we're going to look at some Cambridge English cahoots today. There are currently nine young learner cahoots available to play. And these games bring rich Cambridge English content into the Kahoot environment. And the Kahoot environment is all full of bright colors and interactions and music, which helps to create a quite exciting learning atmosphere, encourage engagement and maintain learner focus. These games are specifically designed to help learners to explore practice and review language and reading skills at pre-A1, A1 and A2 levels. And as again, they were for young learners. So as they play, you and your learners can see immediately what needs more work. 
You can repeat games in class or set them as a challenge after class to help learners reach mastery of the content. These cahoots are designed for language learning rather than exam preparation, but the materials are relevant for learners preparing for pre-A1 starters, A1 movers, and A2 flyers exams, but they are designed as learning content, not exam practice. So you can see here some examples. It's really, really important that the language and the interactions in learning games are appropriate for your learners and help them progress towards their learning goals. When you're choosing or creating cahoots for language learning, you should consider, you should look carefully at how that language is presented. So here you can see some example questions from three of the Cambridge English Young Learner Cahoots. Now, if you're designing a coop hoop for your learners, it's really easy to quickly pull together a game to practice vocabulary, maybe matching images or giving multiple choice definitions or gapped sentences or even translations. But vocabulary isn't the only thing you can practice. And I think we see a lot of vocabulary games online, but really we need to be providing more kinds of language practice and skills practice for our learners too. So providing language in context can help you develop meaningful language activities. Adding images, text or video allows you to do this as they all provide extra input and clues about form and meaning and use of language. And they can provide you with that opportunity to practice reading and listening skills too. Choose or create cahoots which present language in full sentences, in short paragraphs, or videos and where possible try and include conversations and dialogues. This particular young learner set focuses mostly on language and reading skills although some include dialogue and you can see an example here on the right where we've got a dialogue you can see the different terms and you have to choose the correct response. The other thing with adding rich context like images, text and video is that it makes it easier to connect cahoots within a sequence of learning. For example, images that you use in the cahoots can be used to brainstorm or check understanding of Lexis, or a reading text or video in a cahoot can be used as a starting point for a speaking or a communicative activity. I like this slide. So depending on where you are in your lesson, in your sequence of lessons or your period of study, you might want to use cahoots to practice or review language that you've already taught, perhaps at the end of a lesson or for homework or at the end of a unit. But you can use cahoots at any stage in a sequence of learning. For example, you can use them to capture attention or refocus learners, maybe to encourage a positive learning atmosphere, to support or stretch specific groups of learners, or even to reward them. And the content doesn't always have to be language and skills practice. You can create cahoots which help you and your learners get to know more about each other, or to develop social skills, or to become more familiar with a topic area too. And maybe those softer content elements are, are really important probably right now when we're at a distance and it's harder to connect with our learners. So maybe sharing sort of uh, selfie cahoots is a, is a nice idea there too. And of course we know that um, games can be really good for learning. Um, as teachers we know that well-designed games can engage our learners. If they enjoy a game they'll often want to play it over and over again. We know that games can distract learners from stress or anxiety and increase their motivation to learn. And importantly, games can help learners achieve a state of flow. That's when you become absorbed in what you're doing and you start to block out the other things around you. And this can have a very positive effect on learners' attitudes to learning in general. They might even develop a, a love of learning English, which would be fantastic. So I'm going to ask you um, another question. I've got another poll here. Now that we've thought about cahoots a little bit more, it would be great to know which age group 
you would like to use Cambridge English Cahoots with? Tell us in the poll. The examples we've looked at so far are for young learners, but you can play Cahoots with any age group. Which age group would you like to use Cambridge English Cahoots with? Is it preschool, primary, secondary, university, or workplace, adults in the workplace? Use the poll to tell us. And if you'd like to use Cahoots with more than one of these groups, then you can tell us, you can give us more details in the chat as well. And I can see here that the majority of you would like to be able to use Cahoots with your primary and secondary students, about a third of you would like to use them with both of those groups. And then following on, we've got university, 22%, preschool and workplace, both about 4%. That's very interesting because obviously there's a lot of learners at primary and secondary levels and we need to be able to support them. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. That's fantastic. Thank you. OK. So thinking in more detail now, whatever age or level that you teach, it's important to remember that competition can help learning, but only if done in the right way you need to think about how you will organize a game. If you're playing a Kahooting class, you can set it up in classic mode. And that means that learners will play against each other as individuals. So they'll be competing against other individuals. This can provide more of a challenge for confident, independent or higher level learners. And lots of people really like competition. So it really appeals to people who like uh, competing. However, if you're concerned that less confident or lower level learners would become disengaged in a competitive environment, or if you would like to encourage more social interaction or discussion in your classroom, you may prefer learners to play a Kahoot in team mode. So that means that teams would share a device, they would discuss their answers before they pop it in the Kahoot. However, if you're teaching online, this is what a Kahoot looks like. If you're teaching online, you will need to think very carefully how classic or team mode will work in your online classroom. In classic mode, that's one-to-one, -one, learners will need to see your screen via screen share and also be able to answer questions, either in a second window or tab in their browser or on a second device. On the right here, on the screen here, you can see how the teacher shares the questions on screen. So they're sharing their screen and it shows the question and the image and the options. And on the left, you can see how the learner chooses their answer on a mobile device or on a second screen. In team mode, if you want pairs or groups to discuss their answers in breakout rooms, you'll need to check that they can still access your screen to see the questions as well as be able to answer them within those breakout rooms. It's really important that you understand how your platform works and how you can use Kahoot within your platform. So that's one way of playing. So those are live Kahoots in your classroom, either face-to-face -face or online. But you can also um, assign a challenge. If you would uh, prefer learners to play the Kahoot at home and still have the experience of playing against each other, you can assign the Kahoot as a challenge. You simply set a completion day and time, decide if you want the timer for the questions on or off, check the other settings, there's a couple of other settings there, and then you create the challenge. This generates a game pin, a number, and you share the number with learners so that they can play the challenge at home independently. And we'll look again at this later and we'll show you exactly how to do that. So when learners play a challenge, they see the questions and answers together. And you can see that on the right of the screen here. So they only need one device. They'll also see which questions they're getting right or wrong, and they'll see their place on the leaderboard too. And the learners can play the challenge just once, or they can play as many times as they like to try and reach the top of that leaderboard. So we've looked at live play, assigning a challenge, 
And now we're going to think about self-study. So you can also show learners or their parents, if they're young learners, how to access Kahoot's in self-study mode within the Kahoot app. So Kahoot is available as a web-based project, but it's also available as an app. And self-study happens in the app. This is great if you want your learners to work independently at their own pace. And in self-study, learners use the questions as flashcards, practice without a timer, test themselves against a timer, and can also set their own challenge to play against other learners. So there's a bit of a social element there as well. Someone's saying sometimes it's not possible in class because we need internet, and that's true. You really do need internet to be able to use Kahoot. That's one of those questions you need to think about, and that will help you determine how you can use Kahoot with your learners. Okay, I'm gonna ask you another question. I like asking questions. So, what do you think? For online learning, we're talking about online learning at the moment, what method of play would work best for you and your learners? Would live play in an online class work best? Or would learners and maybe their parents like to use Kahoot's independently for language learning at home? Or both? Tell us in the poll, what method of play would work best for you and your learners? And while you're doing that as well, once you've done the poll, if you'd like to tell us in the chat also how this situation is a little bit different at the moment with the challenges of teaching remotely in response to COVID-19, you can tell us about any challenges you face and how you're playing Kahoot or other kinds of online games with your learners. You can tell us about that in the chat. I'm going to have a quick look at the poll results here. Wow, okay. So 64% of you are saying both, that's great. And I think it's true that it really depends on the situation. Sometimes you might play a Kahoot in class. Sometimes you might uh, set one for independent work at home. About 28% of you would use them live in your online classes. And about 7% of you would set them for independent learning at home. And it is fascinating, isn't it? Because in this, uh, in this world where we're all online, the idea of playing together is still very popular and it's really important um, doing things together to build relationships and to share experiences um, at a moment when we're quite apart. Yeah, a lot of you are saying live, live play is good and both. <laughs> Some of you have been playing more, more games like this in our confinement in, in the lockdown. Yes, and playing games is interesting here can be inspirational for learners when they're, when they're spending a lot of time online on screen doing their schoolwork, maybe doing lots of different lessons. Games are a really interesting way, a really exciting way to help change the pace and to help them to stay engaged with what they're doing. Okay, a more serious slide here. Conditions for success, whatever age or level you teach, there are some very key things to consider when choosing or creating a Kahoot or any other kind of online game for your learners. So you need to think about whether learners have devices, an internet connection, and I would add to that a supportive environment in which to access the content. Is their home able to support, are their family able to support them? Do they have to share a device? That kind of question. Is it the right level? Not too easy, not too hard. Will it help learners achieve their learning objectives? Does it support your curriculum? Is language presented and practiced in context? That's what we talked about just before. Is the level of competition appropriate for your learners? Will you play in class or set games for independent study? And really, really importantly, how will you recognize the efforts of all learners, regardless of their ability or their position on a leaderboard? Because it's all very well for the students who come at the top of that leaderboard, but what about the people who don't even make it on there? Think about that and think about how you can um, respond to the efforts um, of your learners. And sometimes all it takes is encouraging them and talking about the game as fun and asking them if they enjoy taking part. And sometimes that's enough. 
It's also worth pointing out that the first time you play a Kahoot, you need to demonstrate how to play it in the mode that you've chosen. Make sure you go over the steps so that everyone can start playing the Kahoot with confidence. It's really important, especially if you're teaching in an online classroom. And on the Kahoot website, the Kahoot website is great. They've got lots of supporting videos and you can share a video with your learners as well. You can show the video to them to show how to play. So we're going to move on now. We're going to look at an example lesson which integrates a Cambridge English Kahoot. And you can find this lesson on the digitalteacher.com in the training section. So it's there, it's the first item on the page and I'll show you what that looks like later. This lesson is designed to be used in an online classroom or with the Kahoot set as independent learning between two online lessons. You could also use it in a face-to-face -face classroom too. This example A2 lesson uses one of the Cambridge English Kahoots we saw earlier on and it focuses on language, reading and writing. You've got the objectives on the screen there. Tech. So to launch and show the questions, you, the teacher, will need internet access and a device, access to an online classroom, and of course, the Kahoot. To see the questions, learners will need to be able to see the teacher's screen. This is via screen share in your online classroom on their normal device. To answer the Kahoot questions, the learners will need a second window open in their browser or a second device such as a phone or a tablet. And to create their own Kahoot questions at the end of this lesson, learners will need the student's handout um, that's included in the lesson plan and an image of people doing different things, for example, in a classroom or at the beach. It's important to point out here that uh, Kahoot is a platform and if you put images on it, you need to make sure, you need to check the copyright and make sure you have permission to use any image uh, within a Kahoot because it goes up on a platform which is publicly available. However, you could use pictures drawn by your learners instead or maybe photos that you've taken um, which are non-identifiable as well. So, next question is, are you gonna play live or are you going to set the Kahoot for independent study? Path one, you can do all the activities in a single lesson playing the Kahoot in classic mode. That's individual learners playing against each other. This is more appropriate if you and your learners are comfortable in an online classroom and using Kahoot at the same time. Your learners must also be able to access the online classroom and a device or screen to answer the Kahoot questions. And this might be a bit too tricky for some young learners, but also for some adults. Um, if it's too tricky to manage all that tech, choose path two instead. So path two, that's the blue box there. You do the first part of the sequence in lesson one in an online classroom. You then set the Kahoot as a challenge or self-study at home. And then you complete the sequence in a second lesson. And this is more appropriate if you and your learners are new to online teaching, if your learners have access to only one device, or if your learners are less confident as well. So there's two different pathways to do the same content. I think we all need a bit of fun at the moment. So this lesson is built around a detailed image, which can be used to introduce or review language, which is all very appropriate for A2 level young learners. You can see that in the image here. Before you show them the picture at the beginning of the lesson, you can warm learners up by introducing the theme of fun. Connect with your learners by asking them what they find fun, and by sharing some of the fun things that you do too. So that's just to warm up before you show them the picture. Then there's a lovely lead-in activity. Part of it is shown here on the left. It's just one question. You explain to learners that they're going to close their eyes and listen to you talking about a picture. 
after you give your description, you ask them a question and learners simply tell you what they think or imagine the picture looks like, either orally or maybe by the chat in your online classroom. And there's no right or wrong answers here. You're just asking them to imagine what the picture looks like. Once you've finished your descriptions, you can share your screen and show learners the main image in the Kahoot. That's this picture here on the slide. You can ask them to tell you if it's the same as the picture they imagined, how it's different. You can check relevant vocabulary in the picture and elicit language for describing people and things. If you're then going to play a live Kahoot in your online lesson to practice the language, you go to the Kahoot, that's on the left, and select play. You choose present in the pop-up box. That's the middle image here on the slide. And then the purple bit on the right, you choose your game options. It's a good idea to keep the friendly nickname generator on. That means that learners can't add their own nicknames. They get one given to them. They're quite fun names, but they're not rude. If you let them write their own, sometimes you get unexpected results. If you want to be able to discuss the questions as you're playing, you should turn off the button that says automatic move through questions. But if you do this, remember that when you're interrupting the flow of the game, you might distract learners from what they're doing. Sometimes it's just best to play the game all the way through and revisit questions when the game has finished. Finally, when you're on that purple screen, when you've chosen all your options, you go back to the top and you select uh, classic, that's the green button there. And once you've selected that button, you get the game pin. That's that big number on the main screen here. A good idea here is just to share your screen at this point so that learners can see that number and they take that number and they write it into um, their device. So they go to the website, the Kahoot website, they see on your screen, they can see the number, but then they need to open a window or go to that other device. They need to go to kahoot.it or the Kahoot app on their device. They enter the pin and choose a nickname. And once all the learners have joined, then you can start the Kahoot. And this is what it looks like when you start. Learners see the input and the questions via the screen share in your online classroom. That's the screen on the right here. And then they need to select their answers in the window they opened um, on their other screen or on their other device on the left there. So as learners um, finish each question, they and you can see which ones they're getting right and which ones they're getting wrong. You can get learners discussing um, their answers at this point, or you might prefer to keep the game and the momentum going and come back and review those questions at the end of the Kahoot. In this screenshot, I just did an example to show you, it's just my question, but you would see the numbers of students who chose which answers there. So you'd get a good idea um, of what they're finding tricky. For pathway two, this is the option where you don't want to play the Kahoot in class, you want to set it for home. Uh, if you're happy for your learners to still compete against each other, you can set a challenge. And the challenge is like this, you go back to the Kahoot, you select play again, and you choose, this time you choose a sign in the pop-up box. That's the box in the middle again. Here is a blue arrow pointing to a sign. You select the options you want and share the code with your learners or their parents. And it's the same thing. Learners go to kahoot.it, enter the code, choose a nickname, and then they can play the game as many times as they like. So if you do this, if you set a challenge, you can see which questions learners find more easy or difficult, which will help you to inform your next class to know which bits they need to practice more. 
If you prefer not to use a competitive environment, if you don't want to use a leaderboard, you can ask learners or their parents to access the Kahoot as a self-study Kahoot through the app. Learners just open the app and search for the name of the Kahoot, and then they can practice without a timer or they can test themselves uh, against a timer for added challenge. If you choose the self-study mode, um, you're, you won't be able to see though how your learners are progressing or which questions they get right and wrong. That's within the app, it's in their own environment. Okay, let's have a look. So this is um, the lovely thing about Kahoot is that it helps you to understand how your learners are doing. When they finish the Kahoot, or when they return to the second lesson, if you used uh, independent study Kahoot, you can revisit and work on any challenging areas or questions. If you, the teacher, signed in and played a live game, or if you set the Kahoot as a challenge, you'll be able to access the report for the Kahoot that you played. The summary section will tell you which questions your learners found difficult. And to review questions with your class, without revealing individuals' answers, so without revealing who got what right and what got wrong, go straight to questions. And again, here you can see the question, you can encourage learners to give explanations for the right and wrong answers, to give examples, and to support each other too. So the next stage of this lesson is where it gets fun. So Kahoot's are great to play, they're really engaging, learners really love playing them. But the next best thing to, to playing them is to create their own and have other learners play the questions that they've created. So the next stage in this lesson is all about creating their or writing their own Kahoot. Um, if you have older learners, you could just simply show them how to create a Kahoot or you could show them a, a video on how to create a Kahoot on the website and they can just create their cahoots on the website in their own account. But for young learners or for other learners who need more support, you can, uh, you can help them out a little bit. So you'll need, to, first of all, to either share an image with your learners that they can use to create their cahoot questions. Or alternatively, you can ask learners to draw their own pictures. So in this activity, we're aiming for learners to create sentences like the ones they saw in the Kahoot that they just played. So you share the student's handout, go through the instructions, and they've got some sentence starters here to help them write those descriptions. And they've got the options, they need to have one correct answer and three incorrect answers. And try at this point, to, if you're using a shared image especially, you can elicit a few example sentences and set them off to create their own questions. If you can use uh, breakout rooms or the chat in your online classroom, learners can work with a partner to create their sentences. Or alternatively, you can set the step for homework if you've got a short amount of time. So when you've received all your learners' questions, you can have a look at them. And you can use some of their sentences and the pictures, if they've drawn them, to create a new Kahoot for another day. And this is really very simple. When you're logged into Kahoot, you simply select create, and then you just start adding your questions. And it looks like this on the screen. The free version of Kahoot allows you to create multiple choice and true or false questions. If you have a premium subscription, you can add slides and other question types like ordering and open questions. And it has nice things as well, like picture reveal, where you can show a picture and then it's covered with squares and the timer starts and the picture is slowly revealed. So learners quite like that, it's quite exciting too. You can also add YouTube videos and images to your Kahoots to enrich your content and to provide more context, as we mentioned before, for the language that you're focusing on. But also, as I mentioned, you should always make sure you have permission to use images or video and you should attribute as well as necessary. So that brings us to the end of the lesson. And you can access and download the lesson plan from the digitalteacher.com. That's available now, along with tips on using Kahoots 
and lots of support and other resources for teaching English online. We'll also share the recording of this webinar and the slides and the script with you next week. And we'll do this on the Digital Teacher platform, but we'll also send an email with that information for you. You might like to share the information with your colleagues, or you could also use them to run your own in-school training session if you think that other colleagues, other teachers in your school would like to be able to use Cahoots for teaching and learning. So to finish off, let's go back to a couple of key slides. Cahoots and other games can really help to motivate and engage learners and to help them develop positive emotions and attitudes towards learning. These guys look really super excited. However, it's really important to get it right. We need to think carefully about the quality of the content and the quality of the experience for the learners who are playing. And that brings us to an end today, but I'd like to ask you one more thing and then we'll have time for your questions. So it's another question here for you. As we mentioned before, games and cahoots are great for learning at any age. So we'd like to know if you use cahoots for your own learning and development. Do you use them often, just sometimes, or never? Please tell us in the poll, do you use cahoots for your own learning or professional development? And when you've done the poll, please feel free to tell us what kind of cahoots you'd like to see for English teachers' professional development. If it's good for learners, it's good for teachers too, huh? <laughs> so only a few of you use uh, cahoots often for learning and development, just 14%. And half of you never use cahoots. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, if you have a learning community in your school, perhaps you could set some cahoots for your colleagues. Um, they're really quite exciting and it really brings a different element to a training session, for example. <laughs> I'm just looking to see if you've got any other comments here. <laughs> Okay, so do add your um, ideas about the kind of cahoots you would like to see for learning and development in the chat if you would like to. Okay, just one more announcement and then we'll go for your questions. So it's really important to us um, to get your feedback on the products that we develop because it helps us to design quality resources that meet your needs and that meet the needs of your learners and their parents too. So if you do use our Cambridge English Cahoots, if you try them out after this webinar, or if you've already used them, please take part in our survey. And we'll be sharing the link to this survey, not now, but we'll share it with you next week along with the webinar recording. It would be great if you do try these uh, Cahoots out, it'd be fantastic to get your feedback and see what you think. Okay, so we've reached time for any questions. So please do share in the chat now, write in any of your questions about using Cahoots and integrating them into English teaching and learning. And I'm just going to scroll through the chat here as well to see if we had any um, earlier in the webinar. Okay, so here's a really interesting question. So we've got one that says, what are the most important things to bear in mind if you're using Kahoot with really young learners who cannot read or write yet? And that's an interesting question. So young learners who can't read or write. So I guess it depends if you're talking about um, a face-to-face -face context or an online context, but either way, you'll have to rely on visual content. So um, Kahoot, in Kahoot, you can add images as answer options as well. So you might have um, a video, for example, 
and then you ask a question about which one you see. So then they could have maybe two or three image options and they could click onto an image. Depending on the age of your learners as well and whether they're starting to familiarize themselves with the alphabet, you might be able to do things uh, with small videos, for example, um, cat and pat, and you could say, which, which sound do you hear? And if you're playing a Kahoot like this with young learners, you might need a little bit of additional teacher talk to help them to, to manage the game. But it's perfectly possible to play. Let's see if there's any other questions here. So there's one here, can I use Kahoot while I'm using Zoom? Yes, you can. So while you're using Zoom, you can use Kahoot. You can launch a Kahoot in your Zoom classroom. You can share the screen and that will show the learners the questions on your shared screen. But then they will need an additional window open to be able to answer the questions or they will need another device to answer the questions. But you can play uh, in Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts or pretty much any online platform with a video and screen share. There's a comment here. I think my students have more fun if they do it during a live session. And I think that's, uh, that's a really telling comment, in fact, that the, the whole bit about the competition and the excitement and the engagement is that it makes games, are, are, they can be social. And perhaps, especially at the moment, this is what our learners are missing, is the social connection with other learners and that excitement of playing against each other or playing with each other. Um, so I would agree, I think it's more fun if you do it during a live session. But it's also fun if you play it as a challenge. So you've got here, is there anything I can do if most of my learners have a mobile or laptop, but a couple of learners don't? So in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment, then yes, you could get them to share devices to do that. If you're in, um, well, I mean, this is difficult. If they don't have a mobile or laptop, then they won't be able to access an online lesson. So in a face-to-face -face lesson, yes, you can. Let me see. What's the difference between using Kahoot from the Cambridge website and going to the Kahoot website directly? Absolutely nothing. It's exactly the same content. It's just that there are two pages which you can access that content from. Hmm. Um, I'm just reading through the questions here. I find one that's interesting. Do adults really enjoy cahoots? Yes. So um, just a personal example from my own experience. So I've been working online for the last three months. I, I normally work in my Cambridge Assessment English in a building with a team and my team are all around me. But for the last three months, I've been working from home and I've been online every day and we have meetings and we have social events too. And we use things like Kahoot um, to have fun, but also to help us develop our knowledge or skills as well. And yes, they are fun. They do add an extra element. They break up the pace of learning um, they break up um, the monotony of online experiences too. So I would say that some adults really do enjoy cahoots. And I think there may be some adults who might not enjoy cahoots. But uh, in general, I think that adult learners would enjoy using them for English language learning. It says here, how many different nicknames are there? I have large groups. There are lots and lots of different nicknames. Um, there are things like proud, koala, all that kind of thing. There would be enough nicknames, that's fine. <laughs> There's one here, this is really interesting. I've never used Kahoot, but would like to. What's the easiest way to start? I don't want to fail the first time. So I think the best thing to do is maybe try playing some Kahoots yourself. So maybe use the Kahoot app or go online and try a Kahoot, try playing it for yourself. That way you'll understand what it feels like for the learner 
and you can see how it works. On the Kahoot website, there's lots and lots of information, lots of videos that you can watch too, which show you exactly how to use a Kahoot in the mode that you want to play. And I've put here in the handout, which is really, a, it's just a copy of these slides and a PDF, you will find links to some of the Kahoot supporting content there as well. So I would start with that. Have a look at the handout, click on a few of those links and see where that takes you. Can I share my Kahoots with other teachers? Yes, you can. And that is a fantastic question because there's no point every teacher creating the same kind of Kahoots. Share the workload, work with other teachers. If you've got three or four teachers teaching the same grade or same level, get together, share your Kahoots, and then you can learn from each other as well, not just about the content, but about what works well in the Kahoot environment. Can you use some of the Cambridge videos for Kahoots? I'm not sure what you mean with Cambridge videos here. You can use the Cambridge Kahoots that are on the Kahoot platform um, and they're available um, now and they're available for the, for the foreseeable future. The easiest way to send Kahoot invitations to students is just to send them the pin, the long number um, that is given to you when you create a Kahoot. It's a simple thing. You just create the Kahoot, press play, and then you share the number. They go to the website, kahoot.it, enter the number, and that's it, they're in. It's really very simple. From a user perspective, from the learner, it's very easy to get into the, the Kahoot and to play the Kahoot. And sometimes learners are less worried about that technology than us. Obviously, we're responsible for making sure it works, but they find it very easy to join and to play. Okay, I think I'm just gonna answer one more. There's so many questions, but um, we haven't got lots of time. But here's one. Do you have an example of what you could have in a Kahoot for professional development for English teachers? Yes, I have lots of examples. So um, if you are a teacher trainer or you're doing teacher training or professional development, any of those uh, any of those courses, you could create cahoots about the, the input content that you have. Um, you could also, um, let me see, you could also create cahoots for um, developing your language level. So a lot of our teachers, English teachers, are teaching English but also improving their English at the same time. So lots of things like that. You could do special subjects in English and you could uh, use those for Kahoots as well. Can we play a Cambridge Kahoot now? Yes, you can. Click on the link and you will go through to um, the page of Cambridge English Kahoots and you can play it like now. You can play it right now if you want to. Okay. I'm going to bring things to um, a close now. I'd like to say uh, thank you very much for taking part. Thank you for all the comments and the polls that you've uh, contributed to, that's fantastic. Um, I hope that you enjoy playing the Cahoots. And if you do, please do take part in our survey and we'll be sending out next week with a recording of the webinar. Thank you very much and uh, have a lovely rest of the day, whatever time it is for you. Goodbye.